Hey guys. <laughs> hey, Zach here, joining you from the gym this beautiful day. I was feeling inspired to hop on and talk to you guys about an old pattern that I used to fall into time and time again. And probably the single most destructive behavior that kept me absolutely stuck. It's something that we all do without realizing it. And it's something that I used to do and it held me back in such big ways. I caught myself at the gym today for a brief moment having some of these initial triggering thoughts that I used to fall into, I used to ruminate over. Comparing ourselves to other people is the most fucked up and cruel thing that we can do to ourselves. Fortunately, I've learned how to catch myself when I feel those triggering thoughts and I've learned how to dismiss them really effortlessly. And that's something that I want all of you to be able to do as well. You guys might think, oh, this guy, he's reasonably young and, you know, has muscles. You know, who is he to compare himself to other people? But I mean, guys, like I'm here working out at this elite gym with like six foot tall Adonis models, like guys that you would see on a cover of GQ magazine. And this is the kind of stuff that I used to do to myself. I would just compare myself to them and tell myself I'm not good enough because I don't look like them and that I can't be happy, I can't have a satisfied, fulfilled life unless I look like them. And I used to do everything I could to try to, you know, emulate, emulate that type of appearance. And, and guys, that's, that's not possible for me. I'm a little guy with a little build. Um, and this is something that gay men do all the fucking time. And it's such a cruel thing because guys, even these Adonis guys at the gym that I'm talking about, I guarantee you at some point in their life, they've compared themselves to other people, if not currently in this moment. I mean, grass is always greener on the other side. The point is we can never fucking know like what someone else is thinking or someone else's journey. But what we do to really fuck ourselves is compare ourselves to other people as if we know who they are. We know what they've gone through. We know, you know, what their life must be like. We, we, we make up these stories, these bullshit fucking stories. And we convince ourselves that, oh, they're lucky or, oh, this or that. And they must have it so great. And it's just, and, and we want to be like them. And in doing so, we don't want to be ourselves and we're rejecting ourselves at the deepest level. People compare themselves to other people without realizing it. Most of the time, we find a fault within ourselves. We see something they have that we think we want and we think because we don't have it that we're not good enough. And guys, this is something that takes such a toll on our self-esteem and our self-confidence, which is one of the most attractive qualities, by the way, self-esteem and self-confidence. But when we're not feeling good enough because we think other people are better than us, then guys, it makes us feel really shitty. It makes us feel discouraged. It makes us feel defeated. It makes us afraid that we'll be rejected because we don't look like the people that we're comparing ourselves to. And so it's just this, this huge way that we mind fuck ourselves and we hold ourselves back. And this is one thing that I see that keep gay men single and why gay men are the social group most likely to be alone, not in a relationship. It's a habit we've got to break. And it's something that I've been able to do today at the gym. Like, like I mean, yeah, I've got a little bit of muscle action going on, you know, a little bit, and, and I'm proud of it. But if I compared myself to some of these other guys, I could just tell myself I'm a scrawny weakling who will never be good enough. And this is the shit that I used to do to myself. Like, I used to be like, like paid to dance on a stage, mostly almost naked, you know? Like I was a, a sloppy go-go dancer in my 20s. And uh, you know, I had a really great body, but I never thought it was good enough. I never thought it was good enough. And I sedated myself with drugs and alcohol to numb that pain, that pain of not feeling good enough. And I used that social lubricant to be a really sloppy drunk and like to hit on people and shit. And I caught myself doing it the other day. I was, I was looking at pictures of me smiling and I was like, oh my God, I have all these wrinkles under my eyes. If only I didn't have those wrinkles. And then I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck? Like, you know, I can't, I can't change that, you know? And I can't fight it. If I try to fight the aging process, I'm just fucking struggling and fighting with reality. Another really cruel thing that we do to ourselves, guys, is not only compare ourselves to other people, but compare ourselves to who we used to be. Compare ourselves to, you know, the sexual stamina and performance we used to be able to have in our youth. You know, I was like a walking erection all the time. Who's seen porn? We've all seen porn here. And, and yeah, who do they feature in porn? Got, in porn, guys with giant dicks. 
And so we think that that's the normal. And when we compare our dicks to those dicks that we see on TV, yeah, most of the time we're probably not gonna add, it's not gonna add up. And that's another way we can feel inadequate. And guys, when we're not feeling confident about our penis or confident about our, our sexual performance, guess what that does? It takes a huge toll on our ability to sexually function because we're distracted, we're thinking about something else, we're not feeling good enough. And so, yeah, things are not gonna work as well as they could because we're not feeling in the moment. And for you to have a really beautiful sexual experience, it's so important for you to be able to be fully present and in the moment, and also to be really confident in yourself. And guys, it doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, any of that, how much you weigh, guys, it's all in your mindset. You can choose to be your biggest enemy and tell yourself you're not good enough because you don't have a giant dick and you're not six feet tall and muscular and young or whatever. Or guys, you can allow yourself to be your biggest cheerleader and you can enjoy life and you can be at a place of acceptance of who you are and all the gifts that you all have to offer this world. Because guys, we all have amazing gifts. We are all unique, beautifully made, perfectly made children of the universe, children of God, children of the universe, whatever you wanna, however you wanna say it. But guys, we can hold ourselves back in, in incredible ways or we can propel ourselves to greatness, to live fully, to be happy, to be confident, to, to experience life and to be present in this moment. Because guys, if you're dwelling in the past, dwelling about, you know, how hard your dick used to get or how muscular you used to be or how you know much hair you used to have on your head guys like i mean you're not in the present moment you're dwelling in the past you're trying to like somehow warp yourself back into time and guys it doesn't work that way all we have is this present moment and we get to decide what we do with each and every present moment guys we can be our biggest enemy in life we can be the biggest villain in our life and it's due to the thoughts that we have about ourselves. And one thing I, I don't think a lot of you realize is that we have the power to choose our thoughts. Like I couldn't control the initial trigger when I saw this huge Adonis, like beefy man in the gym and thought, man, he's got big muscles. But like in an instant, I dismissed this concept of comparing myself to him because I don't know his journey. I don't know what he's gone through in life and I don't know how confident he is. And if I make a, up a bullshit story about who that guy is, like, I'm just shooting myself in the foot and I'm just holding myself back. So instead of comparing yourself to other people, focus on who you are in this moment and what you can love about yourself. And I guarantee you, life will be more joyful. You'll have a more pleasant experience. You'll take more risks. And guys, we also, you know, there's, there's, there's preventative work, but there's also work in the moment because I realize when we're putting ourselves out there, we're reaching out to people, there are lots of opportunities for us to be triggered. If we feel like, someone doesn't want to talk to us or doesn't want to date us or doesn't want to have sex with us or be our partner, be our boyfriend. I mean, that can be really triggering. We can feel rejected and then create a story. That's when the flood of all those beliefs that we've created about ourselves, like just flood our minds. And that's where we go down that slippery slope of not feeling good enough. Oh, he doesn't want to give me his number because I'm not handsome enough. Oh, it's because I'm too short. Oh, it's because I'm bald. Oh, it's because I'm fat. Oh, it's because I'm poor. And these negative judgments about ourselves, guys, this is what holds us back in life. And even in a moment where somebody doesn't wanna give me his phone number, guys, that doesn't mean anything about me. Like, that's his story. Like, he doesn't wanna give me his number? Okay, that happened, I can't pretend it didn't. It might be a little uncomfortable and awkward for a brief moment, but that doesn't mean anything about me. Like, I can't jump in that guy's mind and think what he, know what he's thinking. This is where we can really screw ourselves over because we think we can. But guys, we can never, ever, 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 ever know what anyone else is thinking. So do yourself a favor and stop thinking that you can read people's minds because you can't. And guys, that's why it's so important to get support and do the preventative work because these stories of not being good enough, not being attractive enough, they stay kind of dormant most of the time. They're, they're not just constantly running through our face, but, but then we compare ourselves to someone else or we feel judged or we feel rejected or we feel insecure or we feel nervous. And all those stories, like I said before, they come flooding back. And there's something that can really affect you very negatively and something that can have a profound impact on, on, on your life experience, especially, especially in that moment. And so, so guys, I just 
I want you to know that you don't have to be your biggest enemy. You don't have to compare yourself to other people. That you can be your biggest cheerleader and biggest asset in life. And, and you and you alone have that power. So, and if, if this is something that you're really struggling with, just know like at Gay Man Thriving, this is exactly what we help gay men do. As gay men, we have specific struggles, specific obstacles, because we grew up rejecting ourselves from a really early age. We're mostly taught that it's not okay to be who I am. It's not okay to be feminine. It's not okay to be attracted to guys. We're bombarded with those messages and they create really, really bad core wounds about not feeling good enough. And as we grow into adulthood, those core wounds don't go away. They manifest into other thoughts of not being attractive enough or not having a big enough dick or not, <laughs> or not you know, being the right age or the right height, especially when we compare ourselves to other people. But guys, we can learn to stop being our biggest enemy. We can learn how to be our biggest support system because it doesn't matter. Like a lot of us choose to be affected by other people and we live based on how we view other people viewing us. And so we thrive off of compliments and things from other people. And that's what builds our self-esteem and confidence. And I'm not going to lie, positive reinforcement and praise always feels good. But if you're dependent on that to feel confident about yourself, then you're also really fucking yourself because it really doesn't matter what other people say if you can't believe it yourself. No one else can make you feel anything. You have that power alone. And guys, I want you to be your biggest cheerleader. So um, I am gonna head out. I uh, love you all. I just want you to have the type of confidence and happiness that you deserve, the type of relationships, the type of connections that you deserve, that we all deserve as human beings and that we all crave on the deepest level. So I hope you all have a beautiful day. Um, thank you for joining me today and uh, much love to you all. All right, guys, bye for now.